Valves control the flow of liquids and gases through pipes and tubes. They're so much part of our lives, we hardly think twice about them. But a faulty valve in an airplane or chemical plant could be catastrophic. Valves must be precision-made and trouble-free, whether it's small enough to fit inside the human body or as big as a car. Many gate valves use hand wheels to control the flow. Turning this wheel opens or closes a gate or wedge inside the valve body. This giant 10-ton gate valve works the same way. It will receive an internal gate or wedge that starts and stops the flow of liquids or gases. First, an automated horizontal boring mill prepares the valve body for assembly and for a controlling mechanism. It takes a controlling mechanism or motor, not a hand wheel, to open and close a wedge that weighs about 1500 kilograms. An automated drill pilot drills the flange of the valve body. This centers the holes used for the bolts that will connect the valve cover. A technician double checks to make sure the holes are in the right place. Then an automated spade drill starts penetrating the flange. Coolant prevents the steel from heating up and removes steel chips from inside the perfectly centered holes. Meanwhile, the wedge is ready. A propane torch preheats the wedge for the plasma arc welding machine. This machine hard faces the sealing surface of the wedge, a process that ensures minimal wear. Hard facing creates three rows of weld beads, which will be machined smooth. Before installing the wedge, a technician inserts a seat ring into the valve body. A seat ring helps ensure a precision fit with the wedge. The ring fits into the grooved body cavity. Then the technician sets another seat ring in place. Before the wedge goes in, a semi-automatic welding machine welds the two seat rings into place using a rotating positioner. Then a lapping machine inserted into the valve body polishes each seat ring to guarantee their finish is flat and smooth. Next, a crane lowers the machined wedge into the body cavity. Using a gauge, a technician verifies the gap. He repeatedly checks to see what adjustments the wedge may need to ensure a tight shutoff. Another technician installs a sealer gasket to prepare the valve body for the cover or bonnet. Now he begins the final assembly. A fully adjusted wedge, with a stem attached, fits perfectly in between the two seat rings. This stem will connect to the controlling mechanism that opens and closes the valve. A crane lowers the bonnet, with attached yoke assembly, onto the body. Its studs fit exactly into the holes that were drilled into the valve's flange at the start. A technician readies all the bolts for machine tightening. Then he greases the top part of the stem. He lowers the controlling mechanism onto the stem and he screws it into place until it's flush with the yoke, the top part of the bonnet. A technician then bolts the controlling mechanism onto the yoke. Finally, another technician spray paints the fully assembled gate valve with a protective coat of corrosion-resistant paint. Precision-made gate valves are expertly crafted. They come in all shapes and sizes and are equipped with controlling mechanisms or hand wheels. From refineries and nuclear power plants to submarines and aircraft carriers, gate valves are helping our world run safely.